Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, to another episode of Men Shrine. For today's topic, we are going to dive in to a subject that many of you have reached out to me directly on my Instagram and had the question about what is macronutrition. I always use terms like carbs, protein, fat. I use terms like macro. Um, I use a lot of dietary terms and bodybuilding type terms, but a lot of people have reached out and said, hey, can you give a basic explanation as far as what these things mean, what they do, how they uh, build a diet, and what are some considerations that go into, for me, example, planning my diet for a day. So I'll walk through those activities. I have a short presentation I can give. And then after that, there's plenty of time to answer any questions you may have specifically pertaining to the topic. So before we get started, let's do some real quick housekeeping work. <clears throat> you can find me on menshrine.com. That is the branded site where you can request one-on-one -on -one coaching, sponsored YouTube video requests. Uh, there's a donate tab up there for you to kick a couple of bucks my way if you like what I'm doing and want to support this bootstrapped business as it, ex as it exists now. And you can also view any of the archived blog articles there. Again, that is on menshrine.com. The easiest way to reach out to me directly is on Instagram at Jaren Scott, J-A-R-E-N-S-C-O-T-T, -T, or at menshrine. And then, guys, again, leave any questions towards the end. But in the meantime, if you're already here, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Like the video. Leave any comments down below of, as far as anything I may have missed or something you would like covered. And be sure to hit the little notification bell so you are the first to be informed of upcoming show topics and live streams. That being said, let's go ahead and dive into the presentation. Let me get this pulled up. Okay, so macronutrients. So there's three main macronutrient categories that we all know and probably hear of quite a bit, carbs, fats, and protein. These are the essential macronutrient category that every single human being and living organism on the earth needs to survive and thrive. Now, there's actually a fourth macro, which is not essential, but many of us consume. However, you'll have to stick around uh, until a little bit later for us to uncover that one. And actually, although it's not healthy, you don't need it, but many people do consume it. I'll show you actually how to track it uh, in your diet too, because let's be honest, we are human beings and sometimes we eat things or put things in our system that we probably shouldn't be doing, myself included, which is why I still have a pretty coarse voice after my uh, weekend trip to Nashville's with the 1% group. Uh, cigars and whiskey are not good for the vocal cords. So learn from me, folks. <clears throat> So macronutrients. First, so a calorie is not really a macronutrient, but when we start building a diet, the first thing that people want to learn about is really what is a calorie? What do calories mean? How do you calculate calories? These are all topics that we'll go into in the, in the future as I continue building out this channel and my Fat to Fit series, my Diet 101 series, and all of that good stuff. But in general, let's have a basic idea of what a calorie is. So a calorie is simply a basic unit for measuring energy. Um, it is the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one cubic centimeter of water by one degree centigrade or Celsius. Now, when talking about food and human energy, the measurement most commonly used is the kilocalorie, <clears throat> a thousand times greater, often written as kcal or calorie or kilojoule, which is kj, is the international unit of energy. Now, in the United States, guys, we just use the term calorie. So if you read any nutritional food labels or when you track your diet or anything, we just use the term the, the term calorie, which could also be the, the kilocalorie. Um, and then you've heard me talk before in my Fat to Fit series about body fat being an effect of stored energy and starting to view body fat as excess energy stored in adipose tissue. So down here at uh, the bottom of this slide, we have that one pound of stored body fat is roughly 3,500 calories. So, for example, if you want to lose a pound of body fat, pure fat, that means your diet probably needs to be structured fairly well so you don't lose any muscle while you're at it. Um, <clears throat> but a pound of body fat loss means that you need to be in a 3,500 calorie deficit during any given period of time. Some people might want to do that in a day. I'll, I'll routinely do a full day fast in my TDEE, which is the total daily expenditure of energy. Again, calories are a function of energy. So my TDEE is roughly 3,300. So in my head, if I skip food for an entire day, I just think, oh, I lost a pound of fat. So that's a real easy way to remember that. Again, your TDEE might differ based on your level of fitness and your height and weight and age and all that good stuff. 
in past videos, I've touched on how to calculate your TDEE in my DEXA scan video. If you actually go and do a DEXA scan to determine your body fat percentage and your levels of body mass composition or your lean body mass, then oftentimes too, they will have a service that allows you to test your RMR, which is your resting metabolic rate, your BMR, which is bodily basic metabolic rate. And then your TDEE is the number that I use to plan my diets. And that is the total daily expenditure of energy. And you see on the right-hand side that we have a nice infographic. So one kilogram of water, one or <clears throat> 1,000 milliliters, would take 1,000 calories for each degree. At 100 degrees Celsius, increase from zero degrees Celsius to boiling point would take 1,000 times 100 equals 100,000 calories. And remember, again, a calorie is the amount of energy or heat it takes to raise the temperature of one gram of water, one degree Celsius. But that being said, you don't really have to worry about it too much. We're not going to be thinking in terms of heating water or not. Technically, when you do a diet, we usually calculate water as zero calories, but it technically does take a little bit to raise the temperature of that water if it is to your body temperature. For me, I've never calculated how much it actually is. I probably could do that for a future video. It might be interesting, but typically I'm always drinking on water or some kind of zero calorie drink. So I don't want to spike my insulin and I do it ice cold, 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 cold. So uh, we, when we get into other videos, I'll introduce the topic of the thermal effect of digestion or the thermal effect of food, which is the amount of energy it takes to actually process things you put in your system. So in my keto snacks video I did the other day, I mentioned that there's foods like uh, cucumbers or pickles where they actually have a technically a negative caloric content because it takes more energy to digest than what the food actually contains there within. So again, that is a calorie. Not to be confused with macronutrients, macronutrients are the effect that certain food types or broader macro, macronutritional categories have on your body, which we will dive into right now. <clears throat> So in no particular order, but yes, in particular order, I started with protein because if you're watching my channel, I'm assuming you want to have a nice body. There's many different diet types you can do. There's many different macronutrient breakdowns or combinations you can use to plan your diet for the day. But if you want a nice, lean, muscular physique, well, you need protein and your diet is going to be based in protein. So protein in general, from like a scientific level, is a macronutrient that is essential to building muscle mass. It is found in animal products, though it is also present in other sources such as nuts and legumes. Uh, chemically, protein is composed of amino acids, which are organic compounds made of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, or sulfur. Now, just as amino acids are the building blocks of pro <clears throat> well, I can't talk, my voice really messed up. <laughs> just as amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, proteins are the building blocks of muscle mass. So again, guys, for bodybuilding purposes or for just general fitness around, if you're watching my channel, I really advocate building the best body you can. And especially you guys watching me, I've done many videos on how to determine your body fat breakdown, your body fat percentages. And I advocate that at one point you get really, really lean just so you can build that discipline muscle and do it. And you see what happens when you are lean in terms of positive indicators of interest or just general responses from people as you go about your daily lives. So for this purpose of this channel and my focus, and again, this is how I base my diet too, is that protein will be an essential macro upon which you will base the rest of your diet. But there are different types of proteins, and I'll keep this real broad because we can really drill into this if we want to, and I will in the future. I just don't want to throw too much at you guys too fast. So there's two types of proteins. We have a complete protein and incomplete protein. I'm not going to dedicate a slide to incomplete proteins because, well, they're incomplete. Um, and I advocate that you as a human being strive to be a complete person. We all know uh, our parents said it to us when we were kids. You are what you eat. So I advocate eating complete proteins, having that be the base of your diet. Now, that's not to say that I don't include incomplete proteins in my diet. I do. Uh, a lot of times I use them for my, my garnishes, uh, other side dishes. Uh, I can make homemade homemade pastas or not pastas, homemade sa sauces and such with your incomplete protein. So my diet is usually based almost entirely in protein. That's not to say there is no fat or carbs, but we'll get into why that is and how I go about doing that here in a second. So people can produce some amino acids on their own. And by people, I mean your, your body, your physical makeup, but they must get others from food. 
The body needs 20 amino acids in total, nine of which the body cannot produce, and they're called essential amino acids. And this goes, again, for all organic living life forms, so animals. That is why that you need to base your diet in animal proteins. I've seen in comments in previous videos people touting the benefits of veganism. There is a time and place for that. However, most vegan diets, if you want to have a body with peak performance and you want to have optimal health, stay away from elimination diets, especially diets that advocate eliminating entire food groups or sources or types for really no reason at all. Now, we'll get into this presentation a bit later that there are foods you want to avoid. And here on this slide, there is one. We'll see if you can spot it. It's pretty obvious for guys that know anything basic about bodybuilding, but there are foods you want to avoid completely for different reasons. But saying that I'm not going to eat an entire category, like I'm not going to eat animals at all just for the sake of saying it, that's bad. That's bad advice. Just don't do it. Now, if you want to do steroids and be a vegan, you totally can, but that is not what I advocate. This is not the right channel for that, and this video is not for you. So that's just to be very clear. Go ahead and close out of this tab now. Uh, go to a vegan channel, and then if you want to look like a vegan, which we all know how they look, that is for you. This is for men who want to have a healthy physique. So protein foods that contain all essential amino acids are called complete proteins. Why? Because they include all of the amino acids that are occurring in nature in organic life forms. And again, I'm referring to animals. Technically, plants are, are organic life forms too. Um, so that can include meat, dairy products, quinoa, hemp seeds, chia seeds, and soy. Soy is okay um, if you're a woman. You can get away with it. But as men, you don't want to consume soy. It's highly estrogenic. It will lead to a sloppy physique, and you should eliminate it as much as possible from your diet Again, if you want to optimize your physical appearance and performance. Now, if you want to just look like an average American, which most are kind of puffy and chunky or whatever, that's fine. You can include soy, but it will, it will estrogenize to a small degree. If you base your diet entirely in soy, well, then that's going to have some different effects for you. And, oh, God, I know this might be controversial to say, but I won't say any group in general, but think of diets around the world and typically cultures or people that have certain diets that are shorter and less, less muscularly developed. Those cultures tend to consume food types that include more soy. Let's just say that. Um, however, a lot of those cultures, they also live longer because the meat they get has heart healthy fats in it, like, like your fishes and such. So really just kind of think, um, Here's a good tip too. When you go to the grocery store, look at someone and then look at what they have in their cart and you can figure out pretty quickly what you should and should not be eating. Um, again, these recommendations here, it's just an overview presentation of the different macronutrient types. However, obviously I'm going to give you recommendations because I want you guys to have complete, healthy, optimized physiques, assuming that is what you want. Um, another one in here too, um, so for my protein, usually I go leaner cuts of animal fat or animal meats, and then I replace the fats with other sources. And we'll get into that here in a couple slides as far as why. Dairy products too, you can use to source your proteins, especially if the fat or the lactose is removed. Uh, so for example, <clears throat> uh, whey protein is a good one for bodybuilders. If you want a slow digesting protein at night, a casein protein is good for you. And if you're kind of budget limited, then you can go to GNC or wherever your nearest supplement store is, and you can do things such as your just uh, complex, just general concentrated protein. Now, for dairy products, I usually include them in my diet when I'm going about a, my day-to-day -day whatever, just maintenance diet. However, if I want to be really, really lean for a photo shoot, then I start cutting out the dairy about a week or two out because it does have... Uh, a tendency to bloat. Let's just say that. So you want to base your diet and lean meat. I'll show you later tonight how that looks because I'll actually plan my dinner out right in front of you to show you how it's done on a day-to-day -day basis. It takes like five minutes and then I just know exactly in my head how I'm going to look tomorrow or Saturday or whenever the goal date is based on how I map out my diet. Um, again, many plant-based proteins are not complete proteins. These include beans, grains, and legumes as well as vegetables which contain small amounts of protein. And it's fine if you do want to eat these. It is better to eat a giant dish full of broccoli with low-fat cheddar cheese on it or no-fat cheddar cheese than it is to eat a donut, for example. You'll also be more satiated and you won't have crazy insulin spikes that won't work and eventually lead you to be fat unless you're training really hard. But I'm getting ahead of myself because we haven't talked about carbs yet. But again, this isn't saying that you cannot eat incomplete proteins. Your diet should be complete in general. That means you should eat all food groups. The thing is that for my daily protein requirements, my minimum daily protein requirements, which I'll show you how to calculate, it is based in complete protein, 
again, the leanest I can find. And then incomplete proteins are for side dishes, garnishes, salads. Uh, I use a lot of things. I use lactose type products. I use nuts and legumes and avocados and coconut to make my home to make homemade salsas too, or sa sauces or salsas. So keep that in mind. Now we go to one that's always a hot topic for people, especially for those trying to lose weight, are carbohydrates or carbs. So <clears throat> carbs are carbs are nature's nice, easy energy source is the way I look at it, and we will get into why. So your body breaks down carbs into the simple sugar glucose, which is your body's main energy source that you either burn during physical activity or store in muscles or fat for later use. Glucose is also your brain's preferred energy source. So any of those who, uh, any of those who have looked into a ketogenic type diet or keto, you'll notice that if you go into strict keto, usually after a couple of days or two is your first slipping into keto, if you've never done it before, especially, that you'll start to get a headache. You might get achy and they call it in the key, ketogenesis space, the keto flu. And that is just your body detoxing or having withdrawals from sugar. So Sugar or glucose, it is one of the most addictive substances we have in nature, I believe. I don't remember the number exactly, but it's high um, that sugar or especially refined sugar is it's like a multiple of almost 10 times, I think, even more addictive than cocaine. So there's a reason you get carb cravings. Uh, there's a reason if you have one donut, you want a second donut. There's a reason you can't eat just one potato chip without consuming the entire bag. And I fall in that camp, too. So it is literally more addictive than most hard drugs, which is, you've heard me say it many times before, if you're fat or overweight, you have a food addiction. So withdrawing from carbs is the same process of withdrawing from all, all sorts of other substances that do you harm. And since sugar is more addictive and more poisonous than most hard drugs that you hear on the news that people get arrested for, well, you're going to have some of the same effects, which is like the brain fog, the irritability. Uh, the lack of sleep and all that if you try to completely get off carbohydrates. So in later slides, I'll break down just some basic diet types. Again, this is real high level. We'll get into these. Like I'll, I can do probably hours on the ketogenic diet alone. But for now, I'm just giving you basic terms and giving you an idea of kind of how these things are starting to come together. So typically on my diet, um, I do go on a day-to-day -day basis, a lower carb approach, but I don't go full ketosis because of the those same reasons. I like to have level energy throughout the day and ketosis. My body's fat adapted. So I still have level energy, but it's a different type. It's a different type of energy. Uh, see it as like a hybrid vehicle switching between your batteries and gas, for example. So the little switch, although it's subtle, well, I don't like subtlety. I like everything to be predictable and level. So for me, I do a one meal a day diet. Maintenance is typically lower carbohydrate, at least the minimum protein requirements. My, I get my minimum protein between my minimum protein for bodily function and the protein amount that most bodybuilders suggest, that's my protein window. And then I fill in the rest, determining where I want my energy source for the day between carbohydrates or fat. So uh, carbs and fat, they're both energy sources. However, the body uses glucose primarily as the energy source. And for most people, unless they've done keto before, then you're probably a customer. Your body's primary energy source is sh simple sugar glucose. So just keep that in mind. Now, what happens when you eat something like a carbohydrate? So you eat like a plate of mashed potatoes or you eat a donut or whatever. Well, it, go, it goes to your body. You digest it, obviously. And then a couple things happen. So the it's broken down to your simple sugars or, again, your, your simple sugar glucose. It can either be stored in the liver, which your liver can only store so much before then it has to go elsewhere. So then it goes to muscle, muscle tissue, which is glycogen. So, for example, you'll hear bodybuilders say, okay, yeah, I'm on a low-carb diet, which makes you really, really lean, really fast, but you're also flat. Flat means that there's no, there's no glycogen stored in the muscles, so your workouts might, might suffer a bit if you're new to that eating protocol. I typically train fasted because, for me, I want my body to use my fat as a primary energy source during most of the day. I completely deplete my glycogen stores usually on every workout, so depend, no matter how I'm working out, typically I do like a finishing set. I'll get down and knock out 100 push-ups or, or a bunch of pull-ups and however many sets or reps it takes for me to get it. But I want to completely drain the muscles or get pretty close of my glycogen source because once they're out, my body has to get the rest of my energy from somewhere else during the day. And guess where it gets it? From stored body fat. So that's just a little trick there. And then typically on my eating protocol, um, I do carb cycling because I don't want to be without carbs for too long. Otherwise, my workouts might suffer. My strength might fall off. And when you get into this, 
journey, guys. It's all about balancing a lot of things. And a lot of these areas, there's fine lines. So when I was putting together this quick presentation, it, it touched upon uh, like a pH balance diet between alkaline and acidic substances. I keep all that in mind too. But again, that's just a little too much to throw at you in one thing. So we're going to keep it basic. Calories, macronutrients. So um, again, the excess carbs can be stored in the liver. They didn't go to the muscle tissue before being spilled over, which means stored as fat once you have too many. Now, all carbohydrates provide energy when they're digested, but of course, like everything, there's different categories and subcategories or different types of carbohydrates that affect your body in different ways. So in this <clears throat> infographic here, we have fiber, which is green carbs. So for example, you'll hear me say all the time, like don't drink orange juice or don't drink apple juice or things like that. That's because it's literally just a carb source that has the fiber stripped from it, which means it's going to spike your insulin quickly. And it's not on this presentation, but for fruit especially, it, uh, it's, a, it's broken down to a certain type of carbohydrate called fructose or fructose, which is usually just stored in the liver. And then any excess stuff, it gets stored straight as fat. So if you looked at my Oh, it was my fat to fit transformation video, that nice long three hour stream where I walk you through my entire physique journey. There was a point where I was like, oh, why am I so fat? I just eat cherries and apples and peaches and apricots and pears and all sorts of healthy things all day long. But well, that's just a ton of nature's sugar, which will make you fat. Um, we also have starch, which are the beige carbs. That's like your, your whole bread, any of your whole wheat pastas, any of your whole grain, whatever that's in the starchy carb category, which is what most bodybuilders base their diets in. And then sugar are the white carbs. Uh, people that have diabetes, unless it's, you know, it, it, it depends on what type really, but those who have diabetes as a result of their fruit addiction, then that usually comes from the white carbs. That's your ice cream, cookies, cake, pasta, full, full fruit juices, full sugar sodas, uh, sugary candies, all of that stuff are white carbs. Now, when I was looking on this presentation, a lot of a lot of nutritionists break it down between good carbs and bad carbs. There's really not such a thing between good and bad. Everything serves its purpose. So for example, I, I got back to the hotel too late the other night, but Sunday night I wanted to refeed because I was going hard all weekend. Usually on these events where I'm with the guys, I'll string together four or five days where I barely eat and I'm drinking the whole time. So my body is not only in a very, very deep caloric deficit, but it is lacking energy because all the energy is coming from alcohol. And that being said, on my refeed day, I was like, oh, like I'm probably glycogen depleted and I feel like hell. And at that point, it becomes a calorie equation. So I was going to get an order of crumble cookie on Sunday, but they closed super early and I missed that. So the reason I was going to do that is, again, total calories, usually your sweets and your bad foods are not, not bad, but your white carbs usually have very, very high calorie content. They're also, since they're more simple sugars or simple carbs, they spike your insulin very, very quickly, which is great if you just did a super intense workout and you need insulin quickly to restore muscle and shuttle nutrients in your bloodstream into the muscle. However, it's not so good if you're sitting around doing nothing and you're just snacking on chips all day because, again, we know that once glycogen has been stored in your liver and in your muscle tissue, that any excess carbs in your bloodstream will get stored as fat. So a lot of guys that are overweight, they are constant snackers and they snack on unhealthy carbs. Um, a good thing that I think a lot of times, again, because my brain knows how this works. I've been doing this for myself for so many years. When I go to a restaurant and I see obviously obese people ordering carb heavy meals, and I know for a fact they're not going to exercise that day, I'm literally watching them put food in their mouth and just have it convert to more fat instantly in front of my eyes. So that's why it's important you guys get educated on these things and how the food you put in your body affects your body because to be a complete man, uh, to have a nice physique, well, you have to understand how your body works now, don't you? And I think I missed, oh no, I hit that infographic before. Okay. I have to take more soda breaks since my, my throat's just barely hanging on. Again, cigars and bourbon, both fantastic. And then a lot, a lot of singing, trying to hit high, trying to hit high notes that I probably shouldn't have been because it was like 20 degrees outside all weekend, um, destroys your voice. So we will move on now to complex carbs. Again, I'm not going to break down too much what simple carbs are. We all know what they are. It's the stuff you shouldn't be eating. And even, even the most illiterate person when it comes to just general health knows that you shouldn't be eat, eating cookies, cakes, white bread, 
French fries, donuts, candies, and all that stuff. Everyone kind of knows it, so you just got to admit it. But I'll fo- but a lot of people don't know why you should eat the complex carbs. So when you eat carbs with fiber, your blood sugar won't spike as quickly because it's not releasing and dumping that energy all at once. Some starches, like resistant starch found in bananas, potatoes, grains, and legumes, have also been shown to increase satiety that lead to smaller blood sugar increases than simple sugars. Now, most bodybuilding diets use carbohydrate food sources with complex and starchy carbs. So that's your, that's your whole grain pasta. That's your brown rice. Those are your potato, your potatoes, sweet potatoes or yams. Um, I do eat things like French fries too, but they have to be homemade. They have to dice my own, dice my own potatoes up and put them in an air fryer and not use nasty fats or anything like that. So, and then your, your whole grain wheats and your pastas. Um, again, like a lot of people, for example, you'll go down the cereal aisle and you'll say like, oh, it's, it's, it's a whole grain carb or, oh, it's a great food source. But then you look at the food label, you're like, well, it has, it it has the whole grain carbs, but it has a ton of added sugar. Well, that's not healthy. It'll say healthy on the box, but it's not healthy. You don't, you don't want to eat added sugars ever because although the box will literally say like whole wheat, whatever. Okay. Here's an example. So, um, your, um, your frosted mini wheats. I like that, that cereal a lot. Well, mini mini wheats on their own are good. It's usually, I think it has like less than a gram of fat per serving. And then it's like, what, 20, 25 carbs or so. That's a good food source. Now, if you sprinkle stevia on it, you're fine. Stevia stevia is a natural sweetener that actually uh, regulates insulin too, which is fantastic. But if you buy something thinking like Honey Nut Cheerios, oh, Cheerios, it says heart healthy on there. Yeah, but it has as much sugar as it does carbohydrates. So really any potential nutritional benefit you're getting with going the, the whole grain food source Well, you're offsetting that with the simple sugar source. So you don't want to do that. Um, Again, I'll I'll go into specific videos in the future and really break down like here's all of the carbs. Here's what you can eat. Here's how you should eat them. Here's how you work them in your diet. Eventually, when I have a more robust setup, when I'm not living out of a duffel bag and I have a full stainless steel kitchen, then I will actually show you how to cook these things because you can make any of your unhealthy food uh, favorite foods or dishes or treats with healthy ingredients and with some new cooking techniques to where you can satisfy that urge. Um, protein crepes and pancakes are fantastic. Uh, jello free or sugar free jello pudding with sugar free granola is amazing. So, um, again, if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel as I develop these topics further into the future, then we will see exactly how to do that. Um, <clears throat> And once more, yeah, bodybuilding diets, you want to stick with complex and starchy carbs. And then these, it's because these carbs typically provide more complete nutrition as well as a little bit of fiber. Although when I'm getting really, really lean, sometimes too, I'll even start cutting out fiber because it adds just a little volume in my gut that pushes it out against my abs. But that's when you get to lower levels of leanness and you're doing it temporarily for like a photo shoot or, or something like that. Fat. Okay. So a lot of people are confused and especially those who are still getting bad diet advice from like the 1990s, early 2000s, where fat is bad. You'll still see this on food labels. Oh, low fat, low fat, low fat. You don't, you don't want low fat food. You need to have fat in your diet. But I think a lot of people previously or historically would think, well, okay, I can literally grab pockets of fat on my diet and it looks the same as animal fat. Ergo, the fat that I consume must convert directly into fat. That's not how it works. That's why a lot of people that are on low fat diets or have been on low fat diets have crazy health problems because you have to get your energy from somewhere. So if you're cutting fat, you're increasing carbohydrates. And why do food manufacturers do this? Well, it's profit motivated. It's much easier to cultivate a bunch of grain or wheat or things of that nature than it is to give you higher cost animal fats. But animal Animal products in general are healthier for you in terms of complete nutrition density. Um, However, there is a caveat there for animal fats. Typically, you want to keep, you want to limit them. And for me, I eliminate animal fats as much as possible and then fill the fat back into my diet with heart healthy fats like fish, avocados, coconuts, things of that nature. So, what fats basically do is they help your body store vitamins and they take an instrumental and crucial part in building hormones such as cholesterol, testosterone, and estrogen. Again, I'm going to repeat that. Fat is necessary to build hormones such as testosterone. That's a big one. Cholesterol too. A lot of people that have high cholesterol think it's because that it's because they're eating animal fats. That could be if you're overdoing it, but usually it's because you're eating animal fats in conjunction with a lot of carbs or just unhealthy food choices in, in general. Um, 
you can get away with eating more animal fats if you reduce the carbohydrates or if you have other considerations in your diet. But again, I go for overall health. So there are fats that are healthier for the heart and for your body than uh, your typical animal fats found in like red meat or butter or cheeses, for example. So I try to eliminate those as much as possible. Although I still eat my red meat, I eat my dairy products and I do my cheeses, but you can buy, I've seen it at the store now, I have some tonight, um, for tonight, where it's like 99% lean cheese. So it has a gra- it has like a gram of fat and what, 22 grams of protein per serving or something crazy like that. Um, my meats are usually 99% lean. If I do ground beef, it's 99 lean. I do a lot of ground beef. Tonight, I'm going to do 99 lean ground turkey. But I need some fat from somewhere. So where am I going to get it? Well, it's usually avocados, nuts, things like that. So I'll show you guys how to do that here uh, when I'm done with this presentation. So fats, yep, they help the body store vitamins. And again, they're crucial for building hormones, testosterone and estrogen, namely. So for people that like to practice things like vegan diets, that's okay. You can get away with it if you're a girl. It doesn't affect estrogen as much. And since a lot of vegan protein sources are estrogenic, like your tofus and your soys, then it's fine for women or guys that want to have physiques like women. But for men who want male physiques, you need to have your testosterone leveled out. You need to get your fat from some point Again, not saying like overdo it to where you're going to have heart problems or anything. You'll need to track your HD on your LDL too. Cholesterol is very important. But get it out of your head that all fat is bad. That is incorrect. If you eat too much of the wrong fat and you combine it with other unhealthy foods, yeah, you're going to have problems. So um, start to undo some of this brainwashing. And remember, guys, as I alluded to just a couple minutes ago, a lot of it's protein motivated. If you go to a farm, look at what they feed animals to fatten them up before slaughter. Well, it's it's your grains, it's high carb, it's your corn mash, it's your it's your barley, it's whatever slop they give those animals. And then you go around and you watch how normal Americans eat. You're like, oh, no wonder you're fat. You're eating like a farm animal. Now look in nature at most of the leanest animals. I used the example last time I made this point and said gorillas, so that's not the case. Um, and actually, gorillas are sedentary and they don't really do too much because it takes so much time and energy to procure plant foods and, and to digest it. Um, again, that's why I'm an advocate of animal proteins because they're essential, they're essential amino acid, uh, protein sources. And also because you want nutrient density. So every bite of something you put in your mouth, you want to get the maximum amount of nutrition there that you can. So for example, beef liver is one of the healthiest things on the planet or animal organs in general. They're the healthiest thing you can put in your body from a pound to pound, ounce by ounce, gram by gram uh, perspective there. So again, just try to think about these things in new ways for you. I know it's going to be a lot at once. I promise it wouldn't be. But once I get going, these things come up because you do have to retrain your brain as far as how to eat and what these things do to you. But um, again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do so. Visit mentrain.com. I'm actually starting to write a book as I explore these topics because a lot of you guys are reaching out to me and asking me these questions. And it's been so long since I've gotten my diet together that I'm going through and relearning the process and looking back retroactively and, and trying to put forth why I made these decisions when I made them. So there's a lot of tricks and, and, and hacks in there too. So the healthiest types of fats are monounsaturated, like in avocados, and polyunsaturated, like in fish, fats. Um, my diet, and we'll see here in the infographic on the right-hand side, the ones that fall on this list, these are the types that I typically consume. So my diet has a lot of olive oil, avocado, salmon, tuna, mackerel, chia seeds, flax seeds, walnuts, you know, just fish in general. I I eat a lot of, um, and then I eat a ton of nuts, seeds. Um, it says here that, yeah, technically you can have vegetable oil. However, we know that seed oils you want to avoid altogether. So don't do your corn oil, stay away from soy, um, sunflower oil, none of that stuff. So typically I just do olive oil or I do a lot of cooking with avocado oil and, um, and uh, coconut oil or MCT oil, which is which is a uh, MCT is medium chain triglyceride. It's really good for weight loss, and it's and it's a lot of bodybuilders use it too. So, um, again, try to get rid of your less healthy fat sources and fill it in with your healthiest fat sources, if that makes sense. Um, once more, saturated fats they're animal fats typically. They're fine if you have them in your diet, but in excess, they can be unhealthy for the heart. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll show you how I track my diet. I have that built in. So I have areas where I have an absolute max fat intake for the day, and I don't exceed that. Even if I'm on a cheat day, I don't exceed that. Or if I do exceed it, which I did a couple of weeks ago, I think I had like 200 grams of fat in a day, like bad fats. Well, I just went the next two days without eating any animal fats, uh, without eating any fat at all. Because a lot of people think in terms of, oh, no, I had a bad day, ergo my whole diet's undone, 
that's not correct. Um, your body doesn't really care what it has today versus what it has tomorrow versus what it has in five days. The way your physique looks, it's a, it's a consequence of consistent dietary habits over a long period of time. So if you have a bad day, literally just have a day where you don't eat. And I, I do that all the time. Um, that's more advanced stuff. I'll get into that in future videos as far as why you can do it and how you can safely do it and why a lot of guys like in Rich's group reach out to me or guys that reach out to me on Instagram ask about my eating protocol like the OMAD and the calorie cycling, the carb cycling. Um, and basically, once you, get to, once you get to the level to where you want to have a fit physique, you have to start doing things that fit people do. So any, any fit person, they usually have some sort of meal restriction uh, in their diet or meal restriction protocol. For me, it's an OMAD one meal a day just because it's easy. And then I like to eat too. So I get to feast tonight. Right after this video, I'm going to cook and I'm going to, oh, I'm going to feast. Um, and the third kind of fats, they're trans fats. These are the worst forms of fats. And while they are sometimes found in animal products as well, they are mostly unhealthy in the form of partially hydrogenated oils. So those are things like margarine, stay away from margarine, stay away from uh, vegetable oils. And these, I'm gonna, I might have to zoom in a little bit here. Oh, nope, it's not gonna let me zoom in. Google, dang it. Um, so for these, the fat types, uh, let me look. Yeah, so, so the bad fats, they raise both your LDL and they screw up your HDL. So they raise your bad cholesterol, they lower your good cholesterol, which is not good. The good fats, again, good, I use good and bad with the grain of salt here, but if you eat trans fat every single day consistently and you go over the amount you need and your body, your diet is not balanced, you are going to have heart issues. You will, you will potentially get diabetes because a lot of times unhealthy fats are also packaged with simple sugars like donuts and cakes and cookies and ice cream. Uh, those foods will make you fat immediately. Uh, they have no protein in them. They usually have no fiber, or very low fiber. There's no nutritional content. And again, it's just what food manufacturers put out there in masses because it's super cheap and they're feeding you like your farm animals. So walk through your grocery store. You'll notice a lot of people ask, why is it so expensive to eat healthy? Well, it's not expensive to eat healthy. It's actually expensive to not eat healthy in the term of like potential future hospital bills and things of that nature. So get that out of your mind that it's expensive to eat healthy. The problem is, is that it's really cheap to eat crappy. And that's because once more, it doesn't take a lot of energy, especially with subsidized government corn and things like that to grow a crap ton of corn and then pair it with simple refined sugar calorically there's a ton of energy there but there's no nutrition and then what it does on again a macro level to your body well it just destroys you from the inside out so hopefully that's another little mindset hack there um <clears throat> Now, uh, remember I told you earlier that there was a fourth macro that dietitians normally don't tell you about? Well, I am not a dietitian by trade. I'm just a dork on the internet who figured out how to eat correctly for me. Um, but in general, alcohol is the fourth macronutrient. And this weekend, I was in Nashville with the boys, and I did a lot of drinking. I normally do no drinking, so for me, any drinking is a lot of drinking. I did too much drinking this weekend, uh, but you must track it. So alcohol is a fourth but non-essential macronutrient. It provides energy in the form of calories, but it is not necessary for sustaining, or for su sustaining life. It also has no nutritional value, so you really don't need to take it in. Also, not only does it not have nutritional value, but when you take it in, it creates a lot of new processes in your body that your body doesn't really need to be undergoing bad things. Um, I'm sure anyone who's had alcohol before, drank too much alcohol, you know what I'm talking about. You feel great in the moment, but you feel crappy the day after. Uh, and there's a reason for that, especially like if you're bodybuilding or trying to build a physique. One, it dehydrates you. So you don't want to do that. You need a lot of hydration in your muscles. Um, two, it gets in the way of uh, protein synthesis, which is using protein or uptaking protein to rebuild muscle tissue. So if you have like a really, really good workout and you really tear up your muscles and then you don't eat and you immediately start drinking, well, guess what? Your body's not going to rebuild itself. It can't do it because it has to first eliminate alcohol. Why? Because alcohol serves no purpose in the body. It's a poison. Um, it can't be stored in the body either. So you know, for example, like carbohydrates, if you get too much, okay, that's fine. Uh, your, your brain and body wants to use them while, they're, while glucose is in the bloodstream, but then it gets stored in your liver, then it gets stored, it gets stored as glycogen, and then after that, it can be stored as fat. Well, your body, doesn't your body doesn't take a gram of alcohol and say, oh, let's store it as fat. It must be processed through your liver, and it must be eliminated through your body. So while that process is happening, happening, a lot of other healthy processes cease to exist. Also, if you're trying to lose weight, um, if you want to, um, if you're trying to lose body fat, then that process is eliminated or it's just put on pause when there's alcohol present. So let's say 
you're, you've been fasted all day. You did a nice low intensity, steady state fasted workout. You're like, hell yeah, I'm going to be in a nice caloric deficit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take a couple shots. Let's just assume it takes one hour for one shot to be eliminated from your body. Well, in that time frame, your body is no longer burning fat. Your body is processing the alcohol and it's trying to get itself back into homeostasis because alcohol is a poison. But it's fun sometimes. So I have to be honest here that I know a lot of you have vices and I do too every now and then. I really try to minimize them because it serves no good purpose. But I was in a place where no one smokes God, God's green herb and it's super social. And you know what? I decided to do it anyways. And I, I, I do drink every now and then. Um, but for bodybuilding, fitness, and physique and general health purposes, minimize or completely eliminate alcohol. If you are taking certain oral supplements, let's say, for things that you cannot buy over the counter, for things you must order on certain spaces of the internet or find from some guy in the gym, or if you're like me, you can get over the counter in Mexico, then alcohol is a no-go, especially if they're oral supplements. So if you're taking any sort of like oral steroids or something like that, you cannot combine with alcohol, period. Don't Just don't do it. Um, <clears throat> On the right-hand side here, we have an infographic, Quick Guide to Counting Alcohol Macros. And it's just a breakdown, a single serving of uh, your typical alcohol types, and then what it does. Um, now, one thing interesting, a lot of people, um, I guess technically it could be true, but a lot of people say alcohol is a depressant. Well, it depresses your mood a lot of times, but technically on your system, it's a stimulant because your body has to use alcohol. Remember how earlier we determined that glucose is the preferred energy source? Well, technically, alcohol is a preferred energy source, not because your body makes a decision, ooh, I want it because it's better for me or it's best for me. It's because, once more, it is a poison, and it has to be eliminated in the order of operations. So that's why a lot of times when you have that first drink or that first beer or whatever, you'd be like, oh, it, it'll give you a little pick-me-up too um, because, once more, it provides energy to your body, but that's all it does. It provides nothing else but energy, and it must be eliminated. So keep that in mind. So now here's a breakdown, just real quick, easy infographic of how these macros uh, interact with each other in terms of, remember we talked about calories as a unit of heat. So for your carbohydrates, we have four calories per gram of carbohydrates. So if you have five grams of carbohydrates, you are eating 20 calories. For protein, you have four calories per gram. So five grams of protein by four calories is 20 calories. Fat, so fat usually, as a general rule, fat has roughly twice as much content, um, caloric content as carbohydrates and proteins. So you'll hear me say a lot, like when I look at my plate, oops, knocked my mic. When I look at my plate, I can actually visualize. So if half my plate is rice, um, a third of it is 99% lean turkey, in the, or I'm sorry, half is rice, a quarter is 99% lean ground turkey, and then the other quarter is something like, I, I make this a lot. Um, grind up, grind up an avocado with a little bit of non-fat milk or a little bit of water with like seasoned ranch packets. Then I can, you can literally visualize on your plate the macronutrient breakdown. Breakdown. So the way I cook, I typically separate all my macros to as few food sources as possible that I know are good food sources, and then I mix them together and reconstitute them in my own way rather than buying processed stuff. Now, of course, I'm on the go a lot of times, so processed food does happen. But again, my philosophy is the least amount of processed stuff, the most organic, most healthy, most nutritional, most overall nutrient-dense and highly satiating because you want your food to fill you up. That way you don't overeat. That is available. If it's not available, then you go to the next best thing. Um, so, for example, if, uh, for, my read feed, if for my refeed day, if I want to engorge on donuts, well, if there's a protein donut available or like a sugar-free donut or whatever or some sort of a healthier option, then I will go for that over Dunkin' Donuts, for example. Um, so your fats are nine calories per gram. Alcohol, which is the fourth macro. You guys got a bonus macro. Uh, wine, beer, spirits, and cocktails, that is seven calories per gram. So five grams by seven would be 35 calories. So same same actual weight. Um, that's why for fat loss, I advocate you buy a food scale. You want to weigh your food raw and thing like that. But just because your food weighs the same does not mean it has the same caloric makeup. And for example, we know this. Um, for ex um, you know when you burn a candle, how it's like real low kind of sustaining energy. It's not it's not like a big flashbang like if you lit off a firecracker or gunpowder or something. Well. Candles used to be made actually out of fat, like whale, whale blubber and things like that. So in general, just imagine it's kind of that same consistency, that slow, steady burning is how fat works. Whereas 
carbohydrates like gunpowder. It's like just bam off to the wet races. A donut would be like just a simple flash or explosion. Whereas something like, like your um, potatoes or your whole grain breads, your brown breads or whatever would be something more like a, like an accelerant, like a, like kerosene or something. So it's not going to explode well, unless you put it like in an enclosed container, but the energy burns a little quicker than fat. That's the, that's the slowest energy carbohydrate and protein. Um, again, you get your energy from carbohydrate and protein. You can get it from protein, but protein is the basic building block of your physique. So your body usually prefers to do it for that. I mean, again, this is real simple. What I'm getting into, there's obviously more biological processes that are kicked off with these things, but just as a general visualization tool in your head, think of it as that flat fats, your slow goer. And we see it in nature. Fat people are usually slow. Your body shuts down. Everything slows down when you have fat. That's how that energy form works. Carbohydrates for like your top tier athletes, uh, you'll you'll hear like in, in the running world, although a lot of runners are doing ketogenesis now because you have slower sustained energy with fat for like endurance sports. Um, but typically, historically, you'd hear them hit the wall and a lot of them have to use glucose or gel packets. That's because it's a, it's a, it's a more readily available energy source. And then protein, um, again, my diet's based primarily in protein. I use my body fat throughout the day to give me energy. I'm also hyperactive, so it gives me a nice, really level focus, and I don't have peaks and valleys of energy throughout the day. I'm always baseline level. It slows me down a bit. And then at night, when I eat, it's the combination between protein, carbohydrate, and fat. Typically, my carbohydrates are on the lower side. I actually don't know what my diet's going to look like tonight, but I'll walk that through you with you right now and walk you through my process as far as what I want to do. I will do alcohol every now and then, like a single, like like a single shot of whiskey, like a slow sipper, and that's if I'm doing a meat only day because it is um it is a digestive. It kind of helps just move things along, and it's good too. Let's be honest. If if I'm eating a pound and a half of very lean meat for a fat flush day, and I have like a two thousand caloric deficit, then yeah, I'll, 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 I'll I might throw a gram of whiskey in there. Um, those of you who follow me on Instagram, you'll see too before like a photo shoot or something like that. Um, I'll, I might do like a little bit of whiskey either the night before or the day of, and that's because alcohol dehydrates you. So it gets sort of the extra liquid or fluid underneath your skin. So a couple little physique tricks, but that's not, that's not saying go out and get smashed every night. In general, I am very heavily against alcohol. I'm paying the consequences still with my throat two days day or two days later. And that's really just because it shuts your body down. It suppresses your immune system. And normally, normally I'm healthy 99% of the time. So the contrast between the two, it just really screws me up. Oh, so now we're going, we're, we're, we're going to go into a couple of standard diet types. There are many, many different diets and eating protocols. I'm sure you've heard of a ton of them. I will do a dedicated video in the future. Actually for all of these subjects, I'm just presenting general information to you now. But here's some of the more common, larger, broader category diet types. The first one is the American diet. In the bodybuilding and fitness space, it is called SAD, which is the standard American diet. And most people that follow the SAD diet have very sad lives and look like sad people, and they have even sadder physiques. Um, the standard American diet is not a healthy diet. It is not one you should consume by any means. If you think back to like the old school food pyramid – Ignore that. That is that is incorrect. Uh, unless you unless unless you're highly athletic, highly trained, and are expending a ton of energy throughout the day, and you're spacing your carbs out to the point where there's no severe insulin spikes to where your body can't have the chance to store fat, you want to stay away from the standard American diet. Um, the standard American diet consists mostly. Um, and for this infographic, I think this is what people actually eat versus what is recommended for them to eat. But usually both are off. So. Let's see, almost 50% of fruits and vegetables consist of French fries and ketchup. Okay, I think this is a joke one, but like literally this is a case for a lot of people. Again, if you don't believe me, just go to any grocery store and look at people's shopping carts. Most of the food in there, people you, you should not consume ever, and most people in the United States at least, base their diet in these food types. 85% is processed and animal. Again, processed food, you can do it every now and then, but you don't want to have your diet. 85% is too much. Um, animal products you can do too, but if you're slamming down a bunch of sausage and then topping off with a beer and eating cookies, cakes, and donuts, well, me just saying that I can just, I can just, I can feel my heart starting to go oh, slug up. You don't, you don't want to do that. Um, 91.5% of diet is not good for human consumption. Yeah. sounds like the American diet. And we see the breakdown here. 53% is processed foods. Uh, 32% is animal products, 11% veggies, fruits, beans, nuts, and 4% whole grains. 
I think this sounds about right. And if you don't believe me, again, I'm an advocate of using your eyes and then connect them to your brain. So go to a grocery store and walk around. Do you see... So, for example, my diet, most of my diet consists of animal products. If you walk in the grocery stores, 80% of your average American grocery store lean animal sourced protein products? No, it's mostly crap. Um, all the preserved stuff in the middle, all the processed stuff, all of the cold food stored uh, uh, freezers and storage units. So typically the rule is when you go to the grocery store, you want to stick to the perimeter. Uh, a lot of times the bakery is on the perimeter too. So if you do have to get baked items, get it from the bakery, get your whole grains, your 12 grains, your whatever is packed with nutrition, and then minimalize that unless you are working out to justify eating all of those carbs. Most Americans base their diets on carbohydrates, and they have zero or very little physical activity. Those carbs have to go somewhere, and we know that they'll go to the liver. They'll, well, they'll go to your bloodstream. They'll go to your brain. They'll go to your liver. They'll go to glycogen, which is stored energy in your muscle. And then once that's done, your body has to put them somewhere, and it stores them as fat. So start, start, start opening your eyes to these kind of things, guys. So standard American diet, I do not recommend. Um, this weekend, I think I... Yeah, I, I ate standard American diet for a couple of meals, but I was in such a deficit that it really didn't matter. And I feel like hell today for it. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on day two of eating a normal diet again, which is a healthy diet. So I'll be better by, by tomorrow or Thursday. <clears throat> now, if you want a nice physique, then the starting point for most guys, and I'd say this, this for skinny fat guys, just as a general base, I'm going to present to you, which is like a bodybuilding based diet. And this is just the food sources or food choices only. So for bodybuilding-based diets, usually people recommend like five, six, seven, even eight small meals spread out throughout the day. That's great if you're trying to muscle build. Um, for guys that are skinny fat or just super skinny and want to put on lean muscle mass, they'll need more carbs and less protein and fat than someone who, for me on the example, I'm from the other end of the equation where I hold mass very well. So typically I go a lower carb approach. So we won't take these into consideration. This image, we're just looking at food sources. So... For a bodybuilding type diet, and guys, as you get healthier, your diet's going to start looking like this in terms of food choices. So here's your food choices. Avocado, coconut oil, nuts, Greek yogurt, cheese, and seeds for fats. Again, you're going to cut out your cheeses, lactoses, and dairies if you want to get super, super lean, like around 10% or so. Greek yogurt's great. Um, I like the brand. It's called Oy Oikos, uh, and it's triple zero. So it doesn't have any added sugars or any crap or whatever. It has low caloric content for a very high protein content. So when I look for my dairies or yogurts or animal, uh, just lactose or dairy type products, I look at the food label and I want the lowest fat, lowest to no sugar and highest protein content. Again, that doesn't mean I want plain, plain yogurt, uh, but you can add your flavoring from other uh, food sources. So you can mix with a little bit of fruit or um, I, I'll mix a little bit of granola. Uh, you can do your sugar-free sauces, syrups, things like that. There's sugar-free maple syrup, which is really good. I use a lot of stevia. So uh, that doesn't mean you have to have bland food, but you need to stick to the base and then add in the best version of what you can in your diet. So those are your healthier fats, your healthier carbs, your quinoa, your rice, mixed berries, oatmeal, sweet potatoes, Ezekiel bread, couscous things of that nature. So a lot of bodybuilders, uh, watch what bodybuilders eat. A lot of oatmeal, a lot of sweet potato, a lot of potato in general. Um, in a future video, I'll get into what's called the glycemic index and then how to choose your foods against the glycemic index in certain situations. Again, for example, you'd prefer brown rice on any given day, but white rice is not bad. Um, if you're doing a very, very intense workout and then afterwards you want lean teriyaki chicken breast with brown rice, then yeah, that's actually a good post-workout meal. Um, and again, guys, look around, start looking at what bodybuilders eat or go on other YouTube channels and then start getting acculturated to those things. A channel I like a lot is called Bro Science. It's because it satirizes the entire process. So they give good information, but it also kind of makes fun of gym and diet culture, which for me, that's a good method through which to deliver a message. And start to make some more complicated topics less complicated. And it also allows you to laugh at yourself a bit too. So you don't feel as self-conscious when you start getting to the gym or when you go to the grocery store. I know the first time I started restocking my pantry years and years ago when I was training myself to learn how to eat, it took a long time in the store. I'm like the first time I did a keto diet, looking at every single food label, I'll teach you how to read food labels too in the future. A lot of them are BS. A lot of them, the numbers don't add up. Uh, so you have to start to learn what these foods look like and what they make you feel like. Uh, just to confuse it a little bit more. I'm not trying to confuse you. I'm just letting you know there's a lot of stuff out there and I'm trying to, to distill it down for you. 
Uh, protein. You want your protein to be animal-based. Again, anyone who says otherwise, that is fine if you want to have an incomplete protein source. If you have an incomplete protein source, your body will definitely show that. So it's up to you if you want brittle bones, if you want your hormones off, if you want lower levels of lean muscle mass and higher levels of fat, feel free to base your proteins on things like soy or whatever. But if you are a man who wants to build a man physique, you need to eat animal protein sources. So that's chicken, turkey, beef, salmon, or any other fishes. I eat a lot of white fish too. Uh, canned tuna, eggs. Um, eggs do have a little bit of fat in it. It's usually heart healthy fat, but if you want lower fat in your diet, then you just get the egg white or you just eat the egg whites as a pure protein source. If you need a quick protein pick me up, yeah, it's kind of gross, but go to the grocery store, buy a, buy a bottle of egg white, plug your nose and throw it back. Um, it also goes through your system pretty quick, quick too. So you'll, 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 you'll probably crap pretty fast and it'll stink up your whole bathroom, but that's a, these are all good protein sources. Um, I eat a lot of 99% ground turkey and a lot of shrimp too. Um, some people say you want to minimize the seafood because of like mercury or whether like mineral or substance issues, um, depending upon if it's uh, wild or, or farm raised. Typically my rule is, is that I vary my protein sources every day. So during the course of a week, I'll have chicken breast, I'll have lean turkey, I'll have lean beef, I'll have salmon or Pacific cod or halibut or something like that. I don't eat a lot of canned tuna. Um, and then eggs, I don't eat a lot of eggs either. But those are good things that if I need to get, if I need to get a couple more grams of protein to my diet, then I'll have a big bowl of hard boiled eggs and I'll just pop one in or you can make it into an egg salad with a uh, miracle whip instead of full fat mayonnaise and Mustard has usually little to very no calories. And then there you go. Throw it on a piece of toasted whole grain bread. Uh, they actually have keto bread now, which is part of Kroger's Carb Master Series, which I absolutely love. So there's a quick snack. And again, as we develop more and more of these topics, I'll show you how to create these things because you'll literally be able to look in your fridge. Okay, here's eggs, here's milk. All of the foods will fit certain rules that I'm breaking down where it has pretty much more or less just one of the single macronutrients. So I can literally look and say, okay, my tub of Greek yogurt with no fat and no sugar, that's pure protein. My egg, that's mostly protein with a little bit of fat in the term of the yolk in the middle. And then you can literally visually just put these together. Um, since they're all based in grams, they're all based in the metric system. We use food scales. Then you can build meals very quickly and it's very easily once you reduce them down to their core components. Uh, so again, omnivorous proteins, you want animal source proteins. If that's not available, yes, you can do plant-based proteins. I actually eat a lot of plant-based proteins too. Uh, quinoa is a good one. Beans. I don't do too much beans. It has a lot of fiber, although I think I'm going to do a seven, I think I have a seven layer dip. So I'm going to, I'll map that in my diet here in a minute. Textured vegetable protein. So this is more like if you do a vegan type diet, vegan protein powder, uh, tempeh and tofu. Now, I have done veganism before. That's why I, I speak so fervently against it because I bought into the concept that it's good. And like and there's a, there's a whole kind of religious type uh, undertone to it, which makes sense if that's your focus, like as far as like anti-animal cruelty or like farming practices or whatever. But for me, it's all about I want to optimize health. Um, and a lot of those arguments have been debunked. Again, I'm just keeping this really broad for the topic. Now, whenever I talk about diet, I always get vegans in the comments. So I guess it's for you guys. Um, men, no tofu, no soy period. If you want, if you want bitch tits, if you want high estrogen, great, go for it. If not, again, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm telling you what will happen if you do certain things. So if you want a highly estrogenized physique, yes, go for tofu. If you want to build a physique like a man, then get rid of the soy, get rid of this, get rid of all these foo-foo diets that eliminate entire food groups. However, if that doesn't mean to turn down beans to get all together, for example, I love beans. I love a good pot of chili. Although I normally do a protein only chili. I, I do like a 99% lean turkey, 99% lean ground beef. Um, uh, center cut bacon gives it a nice flavor. So have the butcher trim all the fat off the bacon. It's actually, you can eat as much bacon as you want if there's lower fat content on it. And then throw that together in a pot of chili and season it as you would a normal chili. That is actually quite good. Um, I do like every now and then like a seven bean soup or stew or something like that. Uh, when I was a vegan, I cooked a lot with tempeh. Tempeh is actually really good stuff. It has a nice texture. Um, I would do and I still cook some vegan recipes. So, for example, if I need fat in my diet, um, I used to make meatballs with um, I used to make meatballs with like whole ground walnuts and tempeh, which gives it kind of that ground beef consistency to it. So, again, really, what, as we develop these things more, it'll be more about you trying different food sources as you go and start stocking your pantry. You're learning how to cook, learning how to prepare these foods, and as you track and feel what it does to your body. But in general, stay away from elimination diets and do not consume tofu or soy if you are a man. Vegan protein powders are fine if that's all you have in a bind. Typically, you want to go to animal-based protein powders. 
Um, but every now and then, especially when I'm getting leaner, because lactose does have the ability to bloat, at least for me, uh, once I get to lower or leaner levels of body fat, I will go to like a pea protein, a hemp protein, or a plant type pro protein. So once more to be clear, there's no such thing as good versus bad food. They all serve their place. But over a long amount of time in eating these things consistently, there are better and worse options based on your goals. But in general, your goals should not to be have a this, you, you should not have the goal of having a heart attack before you're 60 or having a physique like a woman if you're a man. So I'm, I'm just assuming your goal is to be healthy in general. So that's that's where I make these comments. Veggies are great. So anything like your kale, peppers, tomato, cucumber, mixed greens. I love veggies, but I don't eat a lot of veggies because they require you to eat a lot of them to get the same amount of nutrition as you need as you can get with just meat or just a varied protein source or animal uh, food source. However, they're fantastic for seasoning. Uh, they're good for sa uh, satiety or uh, satiety. So um, if I'm if I've already eaten my food for the day and I have room left in the gut, then yeah, I'll eat some carrots. I'll eat cucumbers. I'll, I'll, I'll do a veggie bowl like peppers or things like that. But um, and when I do do vegetables, typically I'll do them as like a vegetable juice. Um, so again, I'll criticize diets like veganism and uh, vegetarianism, but I'm a big plant guy. As you know, I partake in the smoked consumption of plant medicine, usually on a daily basis before bed or when I go into a real creative state and just to slow me down and examine the day. It's more, it's kind of like for more spiritual purposes. And obviously there's other plant categories for spiritual purposes. So we're not talking that about that here, but typically for me and my brain, these last two, uh, these last two rectangles here on this infographic between veggies and spices and condiments, those are for flavoring. So learn how to buy and use and cook veggies. Uh, veggies are great for changing the consistency of food and they're fantastic for flavoring. And then, of course, guys, a lot of these foods are bland. So like a plain Greek yogurt or plain 99% lean turkey, well, by itself, it doesn't really taste that good. So you're going to learn how to use spices and condiments. Um, the examples are hot sauce, balsamic vinaigrette, basil. Looks like they have nutritional yeast. Um, I like nutritional yeast actually quite a bit. Lemon, uh, salt and pepper, garlic. Typically, I go lower sodium. Uh, for me, sodium bloats. And for a lot of people, they say higher sodium bloats. But usually what it is, is the difference between sodium. So if you do like 7,000 milligrams of sodium, or my apologies, if you if you do, let's say you're around 2,000 milligrams of sodium a day, and then the next day you eat like a whole bag of chips and half a pizza, which I've done before, and you hit 7,000 milligrams of sodium, well, you're going to bloat. And since chips are simple carbohydrates with fat, you're going to add a little fat on your frame as well as bloat. So when you hear me talk about physiques in general, I use the term slop. Slop means any water retention from sodium, any extra water retention from carbohydrates that have spilled over under the skin that have not been stored as fat yet, and then anything that has been stored as fat. So that's why if you, you can calculate like, oh, I had a dozen of donuts, but that's all I had today. I'm technically under my caloric allotment for the day, which energy wise, I should lose weight, but you'll wake up with your face puffy or your hands puffy. That's all, that's all bloat. And I call that stuff slop. So I try to minimize slop. However, I do like to increase my insulin or reuptake or uh, recharge my metabolism on occasion. So I do I do a caloric and uh, and ketogenic uh, carb cycling type protocol. So that's what a bodybuilder, just more or less diet, looks like. Um, a lot of people, if you're trying to lose if you're trying to lose fat only, then a low carb diet is a fantastic way to do that. Again, all the food groups stay roughly the same. We we don't have good versus bad. We just have better, best, and not, not so good. However, the, the portions of what we eat on a low carb diet chain. So on a low carb diet, you still, you still want your protein to remain, to remain consistent. You always want a good a level of protein if you want to have a nice lean muscular physique. However, on a low carb diet, you're going to greatly reduce or almost eliminate if you want to go into full keto or ketogenesis, and you are going to eat more of uh, external or fat sources. So that's really the only difference there. Again, your body gets energy from carbs and fat, but it does different things. Carbs are largely anabolic. So that means that it makes your body grow. The type of tissue your body grows between fat and muscle and your soft tissues, bone, whatever, that depends on you, how much you eat, the ratios you eat them in and when you eat them. But just in general, if you go lower carb, you're going to have less mass. That's why, that's why there's that perfect line for bodybuilders where if they go 
if they go high carb, they don't want to spill over. That means they're getting fat. But if you go low carb, you don't want to go so low to where your muscles are completely depleted, which means you won't have good pumps in the gym. You might not be as strong in the gym. Uh, you might feel a bit lethargic. For me, I go a low carb approach typically. I think today I'll probably go. I'll probably go lower. I'll, I'll, we'll see here in the next slide. I'll actually plan my plan my diet out here in a minute. Um, but in general, there's a trade off. So if you have protein remains consistent, fat if fat's higher, your carbs need to be lower. Fat and carbohydrates do not mix. And so if you have high fat and high carbs. Guess what, my friend? That is going directly to body fat. That's how you need to view this in your head. So as much as donuts are awesome, it is literally going to get converted directly to fat. Unless you're a crazy bodybuilder, like like optimal level athlete, um, then you can get away with it. In fact, the first time I hit 10%, I used to do on my Sunday cheat days, I would do, I'd deplete myself. I'd go no carb, very low carb during the week. And I'd kind of pyramid down. Oh, no, no, take that back. That's what I do now. So on Sunday, I would do a carb refeed day and I would eat literally like half a dozen of donuts from the donut bar in San Diego. If you guys ever go to San Diego, go to the donut bar. There's one downtown and one in Pacific Beach. I went there so often. I was literally the king of the donut bar or the Duke of the donut bar. I had a little icon on my Yelp because if you check in, they give you a free like pop tart donut, which is awesome. It's amazing. Um, but that's a lot of calories, a lot of sugar, a lot of fat all in one. However, I did that to kick my metabolism into overdrive. Monday, I would fast all day or I'd eat two pounds of shrimp with nothing else. Tuesday, the same thing. And by Wednesday, I was completely shredded. I would lose, I would, I would lose about a pound and a half of just pure body fat. My muscles would still be full from all of the carbs and calories I ate two days prior. And by Wednesday, I was always completely jacked. I'd let it run out into the weekend if I needed to be full for like an event or something. Maybe I'd have a little carbs before Friday night going out, little carbs Saturday just so my muscles pop and my skin's still really lean. And then Sunday, overdo it again. Now I don't do the overdue days anymore. I do them once in a blue moon. But in general, I'm on a lower carb approach. So for now, I'm not trying to gain muscle. I'm still a bit bloaty because it's wintertime. I just hold a little more weight in general. So my diet will be lower carb, um, lower carb for me. So those are what the different diets and those things <clears throat> do. Let me see. I probably have some comments here. Yep, I sure do. So <clears throat> let me get to the comments real quick, and then I'll I'll, I'll walk you through how to uh, how to put a diet together just for the day. <clears throat> Certain cultures eat soy every single day. They seem to be fine. Why is that? Also, if it is supposedly proven to be unhealthy for us, why does the country sell it? Confusing. Um, it's it's a cash crop. It's easy to produce. It's a lot easier to produce pound for pound uh, soy than it is uh, to raise high quality organic beef. And the reason we know this is because it's reflected in the price at the supermarket. Um, I did mention that with a lot of as Asiatic cultures um, that if you look at their stature, there's a reason that they're typically shorter, um, a little on the leaner side. And it's an effect, it's an effect of that. Whereas cultures that um, go like either the higher carb route or they have like more animal based diets. They're typically a little just bigger and fuller. And, um, and, and again, this is over the term of evolution, like tens or hundreds or whatever, thousands of years. So you, you do see that in these cultures. They're fine. Uh, their longevity is usually out there, but they're typically more on the, on the estrogenic side. Um, these same certain cultures, when they come into the gym and they actually want to build a nice physique, they they eat correctly. So they'll, they'll get away from the soy. They'll get away from a bunch of white rice and they'll eat more of a bodybuilder type diet. So, so it's not to, it's not to say that certain cultures can't eat a certain way. It's just as an effect of eating a certain way over a continued period of time, the physique shows it. Let's see, I'm trying to lose weight, fat and maintain gain muscle. Do I actually need to eat starchy carbs? Can I just eat every day potatoes without any, any types of rice, potatoes, etc.? <clears throat> uh, yeah, you can, you can do that. So what I'd recommend for you, if there's still, let me see what you say. Fat in the, yeah, if there's still some fat to lose. Usually, I you can do a recomp, which is recomposition, which means if and if you've never been in the gym before, like if you're brand new to the gym, you get you can get what's called newbie gains, and it's where like literally in the first six months, some guys say a year, some guys I've heard up to eighteen months, your body reacts as if it's on steroids because it's a new stimulus that you're that you're putting towards your physique, and it has an op overcompensation effect. So you can do that. Typically, the what I advise guys to do is to is to go online, find an avatar, get your DEXA scan, get your numbers, figure out what your body currently needs to maintain what it is, and then identify what you want to look at, look like based on your height, weight, you know, whatever dimensions you're you're aiming for, 
and then just build a diet for exactly how that person eats. So typically I like to be between 190 to 200 pounds at any given time. I'm five foot 11. I like to be between 10 to 12% body fat. Maybe I'll go 13, 14. I never go over 15. So if I go over 200 pounds, that usually means I'm at about or over 15% body fat. About 190 and high 180s, I'm about 10% body fat and I'm single, single higher digits. So I just go for that window. Now what I do there, I don't eat to my eventual weight loss goals. I just eat for what I want to look like. So when I was 220 pounds, I just calculated what a 190 pound man needed that had 10% body fat. And that's, that's my diet. So that's, that's a little shortcut there. It might help you out to, to look at it in those terms. Um, if you're training, I'd say, yeah, do some carbs, but you could probably, you probably need to experiment a little bit. So start tracking your, <clears throat> start tracking your diet on a daily basis and then see how you feel. Um, for example, I, I did a full fasted workout today. I feel fine in the gym. Like I feel great fasted. However, on days like leg days, if I'm doing like deadlifts or heavy squats, then I'll have a little bit like more of a carb heavy meal before the gym. And that's just because when I do it fasted, uh, you can become a little more injury prone. And for me, it's never the muscle. It's always like your tendons and joints and ligaments that start to give out, especially when you start getting on the stronger side. So I will do that, but typically I, I do completely fasted. So you'll really just have to try these things out and see what works for you. Bananas and oatmeal, my go-to carbs. Bananas and oatmeal are healthy. Is it still bad idea to eat these when trying to lose weight fat? Because at the end of the day, they're still carbohydrates. Uh, yeah, again, it depends on how much you're eating, when you're eating them, and then whether you're in the deficit or not. So overall, you want to be in a caloric deficit. Um, oatmeal is oatmeal's great carbs. Um, you may think you're fat, but it could be just a little bloat like in your gut because oatmeal has a lot of fiber, which is great. You'll notice it goes through you and it usually comes out the way it comes in. High fibrous foods tend to do that. Um, so oatmeal, it's a good carb source, but it might leave you leading just a little bloated uh, just because of, of the, the high fiber source in it. Bananas the same way. Usually um, I'll eat some fruit too. Like I'll do like uh, dried bananas, dried cranberries, dried apricots. I'll buy, um, it's called, I think it's called Naked Bear, the granola brand. And it'll have like little bits of bananas in there. So I'll throw that in oatmeal. I'll throw that in Greek yogurt. I'll throw that in um, sugar-free jello pudding that I use with like a protein uh, carb master milk and then, and then construct my desserts that way. So um, again, if it's working for you and you're making the progress, I, I would recommend you stay on it. But you'll want to you'll want to start tracking these things to see exactly, OK, if I do this much at this time for this amount of time, here's what happens. Um, let's see what we got here. You subscribe, keep the content coming. Yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah, I'm trying to do this. I haven't missed a day yet. Monday through Friday. Just get a nice backlog going and I'm about ready to hit my first milestone of a thousand subs, which means I will be monetized. So. If you haven't subscribed already, please do that because once I'm over that benchmark, then I'll start receiving advertisements or money. And the big thing about being monetized is that YouTube will actually start promoting your content. It'll put it on the Discover page. It'll show up in people's feeds. Whereas now, you, to find these types of things, you either have to have been following me. A lot of you guys come from Rich Cooper's channel. A lot of you follow me from my, my Instagram that have known me well before I even did this. Or um, you looked for something on YouTube that like, you had to do quite a bit of looking or there's absolutely no one else competing on those topics. And, and you got on there. Um, subscriber. Yeah. Thank you. So I was intermittent fasting for some time and I noticed my metabolism was slowed down. Once I study and every three to four hours, I actually lost weight. Yeah. So if that's working for you, that eating protocol, um, I would definitely recommend that if you want to try to intermittent fasting again, um, you could try things like what I do. I do like refeed days every now and then or I'll carb cycle. So I'll go, I'll go higher carb, no fat. Then I'll do like just a completely balanced diet. And the next day I'll do like a fat flush, which is like protein only, no fat, no whatever. Over the course of the week, the way I track it, I get everything I need. So I'm not eliminating anything from my diet. I'm just eating different things at different times, if, if that makes sense. And you know what? That being said, let me... Pull up my fitness pal and I will map out my diet for the day. Does it not have me logged in? Okay, so I'm just pulling up my fitness pal. If you guys don't have my fitness pal, I highly recommend you sign up for it. It is free. Um, it's a freemium model, so they do have paid versions. I've never used the paid version. I've gotten everything I need out of the free version. Although I should probably explore the paid version now that I am presenting these types of topics. I'm going to do the stop and shoot. Okay, so let's go over to Chrome Tab. Where's my fitness pal? 
Let's make sure everyone can see this. All right, cool. So this is what my fitness pal looks like. Um, I give my I always go in a fairly aggressive deficit. So again, my TDEE is roughly 32, 3300. And I will start filling in my diet for the day. So I do this fairly often. I didn't have any breakfast or lunch, so I'm gonna start with dinner. I know that I have 99% lean turkey in the fridge, so I'm going to use that as a base tonight. So typically, yeah, you'll see you'll see these vary a bit. So if you're if you're not sure of exactly what it is, look through the list of these, and then the ones that appear most consistently, you can guess. Okay, that's probably about it. Now I'm in such a large deficit that I allow myself what I call headroom, which means if I go over my target, I'm still well under what I need and I still will lose weight. But I eat a lot of lean turkey and four ounce portion of lean turkey is 120 calories. That is correct. So I have a pound of that that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna actually do some spinach meatballs. So you'll see, kind of as I was talking earlier for my criteria, I am going to get 112 grams of protein with only four grams of fat and no carbs for 480 calories. So that's a lot of food. A, a pound of meat is a lot of food and I have a lot of calories left. And again, this, the day's daily goal is a thousand less than what I actually need. So I'll lose about a third a pound of body fat today. Um, and then if you guys want to know what that looks like, actually previously, when was it, like a week or two ago, um, I did a video on how to calculate or how to, yeah, how to calculate uh, fat loss and muscle gain, and it's uh, how to like read a DEXA scan. So all these numbers, they 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 all make sense. You can all see here. I'm not a big vegetable fan, but I use it to cook. So we're gonna do some leafy green spinach. Spinach is one of those ones where if you eat it by itself, um, kind of like celery or cucumbers, that it's technically you're it's technically a negative energy or a deficit energy because for a cup of spinach, it looks like here it's six calories. Well, it'll take your body more to digest that. So. Um, just for the sake of doing this, I don't even know what I'm going to use for foods like this. I never track them typically because again, I'll be losing weight just by eating spinach alone. So let's say four cups of spinach. That'll give me a weird number, um, but whatever. Okay. What else do I have? So what do I want to eat this with? So I have a meatball base. Um, I'll probably put them with a the tomato sauce. That sounds pretty good. And again, my, my pantry's already stocked. So um, I typically do like a salt free or no added salt tomato sauce. And obviously, you don't want to be eating sugar. So you'll learn how to stock your pantry uh, when you initially do go through and you check all the food labels. Like, okay, there's no sugar. There's no salt added. It's all organic. It's reasonably priced. Um, typically, for my tomato, it ends up being 2.5 servings. It's about 100 some odd calories. Yeah, it's anywhere between 150 and 160 calories typically when I do the tomato sauce. Again, I'm in the ballpark. It doesn't have to be down to the exact calorie, but I've done this so much. I know what it is should look like more or less 122 grams of protein is where i'm at i need 165 grams of protein that is non-negotiable you always need to hit your protein um and what that comes from is typically in the bodybuilding space they'll say as a general general rule you want one gram of protein per pound of body weight um or you want what is the minimum is what like dietitians and nutritionists and those people say is 0.82 per pound of body weight and then what I realized really quickly is when I looked at my DEXA scan, okay, it's just one gram of protein per lean body mass or pound of lean body mass. So for me, it's 165. I have between 165, 170, 172 sometimes on that end of lean body mass, uh, depending upon the DEXA, depending upon if I'm fasted, what time of day, that kind of stuff. It does deviate. None of these testing things are 100% accurate, but it gives you a good baseline. And when you do them often enough, you kind of know how your body works. So I need 165 grams of protein. If I'm in a crazy caloric deficit, so if it's like a fat flush day where I'm eating only protein, I'll actually go up. Like I'll go like 200 to like 225 grams. So when I say I have a window, my window for protein is 165 to 200. There are points, um, unless you're trying to build muscle, then that's a different consideration. I'm just trying to maintain. Again, um, I don't really set goals in the gym anymore. It's more like target, target weight, target composition. So I know that if I want to be 187 pounds and 10% body fat and look like a fitness model, this is what I need to eat at. And these are actually the numbers I have plugged in here. I do deviate. I do go over. I do cheat on the weekends every now and then. But so for me, these are just kind of like a general guideline. Um, and since I have the free version of my fitness pal, I can't change my goals on a daily basis. You just set in your, your targets and then that's, that's what it is for the account. But 
I've done this again for so long that I just, I just, I just kind of know what I need, but I do need a little bit more protein and I think some cheese. Yeah. I think a pasta pasta with some cheese sounds good. So there's 99% that free cheddar I have in the fridge. Yeah. Where is it? 99% cheddar. Ah, oh, dang it. I don't have it on my list anymore, so let me go back. Typically, it shows up on the food list. No. I'm not sure when the last time I ate it was because I've been out of town and eating things that I normally don't eat. Craft fat-free cheddar. There we go. <clears throat> a single serving is a single ounce. 28 grams is one ounce. Um, if you guys have ever purchased other herbs, let's just say that, you know that, that 28 grams is an ounce. Um Puts me at 159. All right, cool. That's close enough because now, and, and you'll see right here. So dinner, I'm going to get really full with dinner. I'm going to have a pound of turkey, four cups of spinach, two and a half cups of tomato sauce, and three ounces of cheese, which is, what is that? It's, it's half a cup, a little over half a cup. And I still have a ton of calories left. I have 1,410 calories left. I've already gotten just about the protein I need. Carbs, yeah, there's some carbs in there. <clears throat> Um, I probably need to bring the dietary fat up a bit. So at this point, I ask myself, all right, I've got the protein more or less covered. Where do I want my energy coming from? And that's a question of, do I want to add body mass? Do I want to refill my muscles or do I want to lean up? Do I want to be on the leaner side? If I'm not sure, I'll go kind of balanced. Because uh, again, I'm in such a deficit. I'm going to lose weight today regardless. I just want to keep my muscles full and I want to maximize fat loss is my, is, or just leanness is my typical goal. Um, I did have what I, what I trained today, chest and shoulders. So I do need some carbs uh, to replenish my glycogen stores. So what do I have in there? I think rice cakes sound good. I, I have some rice cakes. Um, so there's rice crisp and there's rice cakes. So a single rice cake is 50 calories. And you know what? Just so you can see diverse food sources, I will do this. I don't know why they put one cup. Um, a single rice cake is 50 calories, so just ignore that. So I'll do four of those. It's 200 calories. My protein's creeping up into minimum territory. Let's see. I'm going to want French toast sounds good, too. Carb master bread. One slice is 30. Let's see how many carbs I need. Each slice of bread is typically 10 carbs. Yeah, this has a lot of fiber, too, so that'll... And it's high protein. Nice. Yeah, this, this Carb Master bread's fantastic. So this is how it fits my, my ideal food group. 30 calories. That's very few calories. One gram of fat. Okay, it's negligible. Nine carbs. All right. But it has a good amount of protein for a slice of bread. So you're getting a ton of good things in it and very little bad things. Again, and to eliminate the good versus bad, the better and best. So I'm getting a lot of things I'm looking for for very few calories, which means I can eat a lot which I don't know what I'll do because in eating stuff like this, it has a lot of fiber. So it's going to fill me up. So usually after I'll go up to eight slices, but after like four or five, six slices, I'm normally stuffed with that stuff uh, for French toast. I will go one egg white. But let me, let me see real quick. Cause I think my fat's on the lower side. So I might want to get a couple grams of fat in there. Oh, my fat's definitely on the lower side. And since I didn't have crumble cookie, which has high fat, high carb, I'd probably, yeah, probably need a little bit of fat. So I'll just do a full egg. Sure. It's about 70 calories for a full large egg, white or brown, doesn't matter. So that puts me right at 1,300. So yeah, my protein's already up there. Um, so today's going to be a lower fat day, I think. Yeah, that's what it's looking like. So what else do I want to add? Or you know what? I can do this. Here's what we will do. So I need my um, sugar-free maple syrup. And the good, of sugar, the good thing with sugar-free maple syrup is it doesn't have much calories. I use this one here that has five calories per quarter cup. Now compare that to regular maple syrup. Like, let's just do this while we're in here real quick. So what normal people eat... Yeah, it's so high in calories. They don't even have them in point cups. Okay, yeah. So normal people would eat like a quarter cup of maple syrup is 200 calories. I eat a quarter cup of maple syrup and it's five calories. So that is 
It's a pretty big deficit, and it's literally like almost a tenth of a pound of body fat if you convert it quickly in your head to that. Again, I don't do exact conversions. I just visualize these things and just understand what they mean in the relation between them, child, between themselves or between each other. So I will do sugar-free maple syrup. I probably don't even – you know what? I'll just – I have so many calories to fill in that I'll just I'll just do a half cup, but I never eat that much. Okay, thirteen ten. That gave me a little bit of a bump. My carbs are getting up there. Um, you know what we can do? I'm trying. I'm trying to think of what else I have for snacks. And like I said, I usually partake in a little cannabis consumption prior to eating because this is a lot of food to eat. And I, and again, going towards my daily goal, I'm still off by almost 800 calories, and my daily goal is a thousand less than what I need to maintain my body weight. So my goal daily is to lose one third pound of body fat. Or when you have l less body fat to lose, it just keeps you nice and lean at all times. Yeah, there's a lot of food. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to eat it all, but I should probably add some calories. I don't like going in too much of a deficit, especially when I had a good workout today. And I'm not doing any crazy types of like extended fast or anything. Those are for spiritual purposes and. Since I have a messed up throat, my body kind of aches from all the debauchery this weekend, I need to give my body some nutrition to recover. So I don't want to go in a crazy deficit, um, like a full day fast, which I, I do very fairly often too. So you know what we can do? Um, I think I have some almond butter. That's, that's really good. Yeah, let's do on the rice cakes. Yeah, let's do like two tablespoons of almond butter. See what that does. Okay, that's getting me up there. It's getting my fat up there. Um, let me see. Let, let's try four. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm satisfied with that. So I'm actually over on the protein I need. That's fine. You can, I, you can never get enough protein unless you overdo it. You can't have like kidney problems with that. For fat, I'm in the ballpark. Fat, I'm, I'm typically 50 to 70 grams of fat. If I'm any, for my body, if I'm anything over 35 grams, I normally feel fine. Anything less than 35 grams, I might feel a bit off. But I'm also on TRT, which means I don't need as much dietary fat to produce my hormones successfully. So a, that's a benefit of HRT. TRT, you're, you do have some different dietary considerations. Um, and you'll notice that most of it, yeah, almost all of it's heart healthy fat. Oh, you know what? I have a piece of salmon in there too, smoked salmon. I might do that. Um, and then carbs, yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't train too heavily today. It was just like kind of a bait. It's just a basic get in there, make sure I touch the muscle group that I'd normally train. Uh, my body's kind of tired from the weekend, from singing and dancing and running around and being in the cold and then hauling luggage across the airport all day yesterday. So, I think I'm happy with my diet for today. But this still allows me headroom. If if I if I finish eating this, I'm like God. I'm still hungry. I have a lot more calories I can put in there. I, I'm still 400 calories shy for my daily goal, which is a thousand shy of what I actually need. So I'm in a 1400 calorie deficit and I'm going to be eating a pound of meat, four cups of spinach, almost three cups of tomato sauce, a little more than a half cup of cheese, eight slices of bread, one full egg, half cup of syrup, uh, six rice cakes, which they're about that big per and then four tablespoons of almond butter on the rice cake. So that is a lot of food, but you see here that I got a lot of nutrition. I got a lot of macros out of this food. There's not a lot of fluff here. Now, if I were to do something, which let's do standard American diet. Let's try something like this. Let's do McDonald's French fries. Let's see what that looks like. All right. So 176 grams. Let's do yeah, let's let's do a full pound of French fries because I'm eating a full pound of meat. So let's compare what these two things look like. So a pound of French fries is almost exactly as much as what I'm eating the entire day with all these other things in there. That's just that's, it's just a regular fast food French fries. See, it has a, a ton of carbs. Not as much fat as I thought it would, but it's all bad fat. This is all going to be trans fat and then very little protein. So what you want to look for is the macronutrient ratios. This one has very high carbs, moderate amount of fat, although it's bad fat and uh, no protein. So this is not something I'd eat. This is just for a visual comparison. Let's do something like this. Or I like donuts a lot, so let's add a donut. And then again, I don't have it. This is these are hypothetical donuts. So let's just add these. See what that looks like. So a single donut is 310 calories. So we can see up here that it, for, to have one donut is equivalent to me having 
10 slices of French toast with maple syrup, sugar-free maple syrup. So I do get a sweet tooth, guys, but instead of eating 10 donuts, which would be 3,100 calories, which is how you get very fat very fast, I'm still eating things that are sweet. I'm just eating different things that are sweet. So um, a slice of Carb Master wheat bread, which has high fiber, is 30 calories. So 10 of those would be 300 calories plus two quarter cup servings of sugar-free maple syrup is 10 calories. That is, that is literally equivalent to a donut. 10 slices, 10 slices of bread with sugar-free maple syrup is equivalent to a donut. And then if I take the, if I take the yolk out of the egg white, egg white alone for like a single large egg, it's like 15 to 20 calories. I think normally it comes out to 17. So that, that is just for visualization purposes only. That's, that's why it's important to start tracking your food and getting the macros broken down. Looks like typically on any given day, um, on just like my normal average every day, typically my macro breakdown looks like this. It usually looks kind of balanced. Uh, today, carbs and protein are a bit higher. Once more, as carbs go higher, fat needs to go down. Protein's always pretty constant. So you just have to play with like your fat and carb combos. For me, again, that's why it's a lot easier for me to just, my diet is always based in lean animal protein. So every day it starts like this. It'll be a pound of skirt steak. It'll be a pound of shrimp. It'll be a pound of 99 lean ground beef. Um, if you haven't done so already, go on my Instagram. There's some featured stories at Jaren Scott, J A R E N S C O T T. There is fasting food. There's all sorts of healthy desserts and there's all sorts of meals. So most of my meals look like a giant meat mountain. You can do, you can, you can buy this, this carb master, um, wheat bread. You can toast it. You can put fat free cheddar cheese on it. You can do an avocado ranch sauce to fill in a bit of your dietary fat. You can put up green, you can cut up green chilies and throw it into the, the meat mix itself and then blaze it on the grill. And that is an amazing meal. You can have literally four hamburgers, like four big, juicy, nice hamburgers for less than I believe it comes out to, you know, let's just do it. So I can give you another example. In fact, I'm going to do that tomorrow for dinner. Cause that sounds really good. 10% lean ground beef should be I think around 600 some calories. Oh no, there's no fat in it. So it's lower. Um, now ideally you'd, it should be about the same as the turkey, plus or minus. I could I actually I go to sprouts a lot, so I'll put sprouts in there. Four ounces we already have. And guys, when you start tracking, you'll notice that you see a lot of the same things on there. So I won't need as much cheese. Because I usually put it in the th no, I'm, I'm gonna make this really cheesy because this is mostly protein. So I'll do four, four ounces of cheese tomorrow. Get a little can of green chilies. I love me some green chilies. These are going to be ones where it doesn't really matter because there's there's so little calories in them. So diced green chilies. I'm just making this up because it won't be more than a couple calories. Diced green chilies. We will do that carb master. Try that out. Where is that one slice? It needs to be the wheat bread. So I will do another eight slices. Assuming I want four burgers. Typically when I do burgers, I'll just do one slice and I toast it and just kind of serve it up like a giant cracker with meat on it. So well, that's the number I had pop in my head. I was going to say roughly less than a thousand calories. So a pound of four one pound burgers with two slices of bread that's toasted on each with a ton of cheese, just cheese all over it and with green chili in the middle. And then again, you're going to have to learn how to season your meat. Um, I use the ranch packet for this. And then actually for this, I'll do this for tomorrow. So I'm going to want I'm gonna want some avocado. I eat a lot of avocado and coconut and things like that. Um, in fact, yeah, I'm putting all my butter on my snack today. So we'll just do a full medium avocado. Yeah, that seems about right. So for my full meal tomorrow, um, if, if, if you put it in a food processor with like some powdered ranch packet mix, which you can find in your salad dresser aisle, aisle Put that on your burgers. Put that on your lean meats. It's amazing. I eat a lot of tomato sauces. I eat a lot of these uh, fat-free cheeses. Again, you start with basic food ingredients, and you want to cook yourself and then just add them together for the macronutrient breakdown. And you can see a, a pound of meat, and that th these burgers are really good too. It gives you, gives you, gives you quite a bit to play around with. Let's just map it out. So I can give you another example. Jello, sugar-free pudding. That's a pretty common dessert that I do. I want just the snack pack because I add my own milk in it separately. So here's what you normally do. The package does typically have um, some sort of binder in it. Yeah, 20 carbs. That's that's not very that's not very much. It's negligible. You will use Kroger 
our master milk. Which that is exactly what it is. There's one that's like 45 calories too that I do. Oh no, that's um. So I do a lot of almond milks too, um, especially again sugar-free, fat-free almond milks. If you need sweetener, you can use stevia. You can use uh, sugar-free syrups or whatever. Um, so almond milks have a lot fewer calories, but for the carb master, um, I noticed with the sugar-free jello, it doesn't gelatinate if you use like almond or coconut milk. So I want that nice like pudding consistency. There's always two cups per pack of your instant little jello mix. Put it in a bowl. You beat it with a whisk for a couple of minutes until it gelatinizes. Put it in the fridge, let it cool. And then if I need more carbs, then what I will do is I will do, I think, I think the brand is Naked Bear. I have all the stuff in my pantry too. So literally it takes me like five minutes to put this stuff together. Um, vanilla doesn't sound bad. Or you know what? One of you guys said bananas. I, I do bananas. So Naked Bear, banana. Let's add that. I usually do a quarter cup, but if I have more room for carbs in the diet, then I'll get overzealous and then I'll make it a half cup for that snack. But I still, yeah, my protein's up, carbs get their fat's getting in range. I still have some room in the diet for tomorrow. I think if I, let's say I'll do legs tomorrow, so I'll, I'll add some more calories. Um, another one that I mentioned is really good, you guys, is uh, you want triple zero yogurt. Um, I buy the big ones and actually weigh it out. So I typically do two cups of that. That'll, yeah, that'll get me up there. And then we'll do, let's do, I saw one of you guys mentioned oatmeal, so let's do this. Oatmeal in Greek yogurt is amazing. Especially this triple zero. It actually has really good flavor to it too, um, is a little trick. So we'll do that. I'm right about in carb range. I'm way over protein, but whatever, I don't care. Um, add a banana to it, and that'll, that'll make me hit my calorie range for the day. Um, bananas are 100 calories. I normally put them in like 70 or 80. So yeah, we'll do we'll just medium banana. Again, if you're not sure which one, just kind of go with an average of everything on the list. Like most U.S. food manufacturers, the portions are pretty consistent. And we'll see for tomorrow. I'm about on track. I'm two calories shy. I went over a little bit on carbs but went under a little bit on fat. That's fine. It's negligible because, again, I'm, I'm mapping to be 1,000 calories below what my body needs on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'll lose a third of a pound today and a third of a pound tomorrow just doing this. Um, protein is higher, so it'll be a little fuller. Um, if I'm doing legs tomorrow, I might split this. I might I might eat one of the snacks with some protein prior to my workout, and then that's what the day's going to look like tomorrow. And again, that's a lot of food. For tomorrow, it's going to be a pound of beef, four ounces of cheddar cheese, eight slices of bread, half a can of little green chilies, a full avocado with ranch dressing uh, powdered seasoning in it. I'm going to have a full pack of Jello pudding that uh, that includes two cups of milk, so that's a big serving. And then I'm going to have two cups of vanilla yogurt, one cup of oatmeal, and a full banana. And I'll, I'll still lose a third of a pound tomorrow so, and hit all my macros and actually went over on most of them. So, um, guys, hopefully that helps you out in terms of like how to visualize this stuff. Um, when you start getting into this habit, it's, it's really a lot easier to, to go about doing all this. So let me see. So, yeah, a couple more comments. I seriously just want to eat a bag of Cool Ranch Doritos right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's not, that actually does sound pretty good. That's tough, though, because usually for a, a portion of chips, you'll get like 20 to 25 grams of protein, like 7 to 14 grams of fat, and it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not good carbs and it's not good fat. I like chips a lot, too. Um, there are brands. I don't know them off the top of my head, but like places like Trader Joe's, your Sprouts, your Whole Foods will have uh, different brands. So I eat like a lot of uh, chips that are based with like almond flour, uh, cassava flour, almond flour, those types of alternative flours with the lower fat and their heart healthy fats like like avocado based or coconut based. So um, if you are going to do chips, I like chips too. You can get away with doing that. But again, go for the least bad or most healthy option available as a general rule. Yeah, Fitness Pal is great. By the way, thanks for all the information, man. Yeah, you are welcome. And yeah, I... I always intend for these videos to go short. I did the presentation. I'm like, all right, my voice is kind of coarse. I'm going to keep it real short. I only had like, what, 10 slides. And I thought, oh, I'm going to be done in like 20 minutes. What do I do? And I'm going towards two hours. So that means there is some content in here, which in the future, I'll actually hire a virtual assistant to hack all these up and then really start getting across the internet and start start playing the game, start 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 gaming the algorithms a little bit. Uh, so that being said, it looks like, guys, if there isn't any more questions, I did go a bit over what I originally intended, but there's a lot of information in here. Um, if it's too much, too fast, go ahead and give it a rewatch. That's completely fine. 
And that being said, I'm going to go ahead and close it on out. So you know where to find me. My name is Jaron Scott. The easiest way to reach me directly is at Jaron Scott on Instagram. That is J-A-R-E-N-S-C-O-T-T. Again, on Instagram, at Jaron Scott, J-A-R-E-N-S-C-O-T-T. Or at Mintron on Instagram for any like show or like branded type topics. Go to at Mintron on Instagram. Or you can find me on mentrine.com. That is for one-on-one -on -one coaching requests, for sponsored YouTube video requests. For any donations you'd like to throw my way, there is an archived blog. Mentrine used to be a standalone blog, so there's tons of content there that I'll start getting out in video format as we move along. You Be sure to sign up to the email list there. As I start building out the platform and the business, then I will start doing uh, email stuff. But for now, it's just going to be live streams Monday through Friday. Be sure not to miss them, so do that by subscribing to the channel ringing that little notification bell down there because due to the nature of some of the topics I cover, like a lot of guys in the space, you just because you subscribe does not mean I'll necessarily show up in your feed. So do both subscribe, ring the notification bell, like all these videos you watch and leave any comments before. If I left anything out, things you did, things you disagree with, things you'd like covering in, in uh, future videos. Again, if you go to mentrine.com, I do take sponsored video requests, but I'm so new that if you want to just reach out to me directly on Instagram, be like, Hey, I'm having trouble with this. Um, I do try to get to everyone, but since I, I'm getting a lot of messages now, especially going on like Rich Cooper's shows and uh, I'm just getting buried in my inbox. So I'll start to look at themes of messages and then start building my topics or my content around these things. So definitely reach out. Let me know what you need help on. Um, if it's something that I've done before that I'm an expert on or that I one time had problems with, but I no longer have problems with, I'll definitely throw it into a show topic. A lot of the questions have like kind of the same core common elements. So uh, I'll craft the channel based on what, what you guys need because – I have a lot of content. Uh, there's a lot to cover, and I have a backlog of like 2 million words I've written during my transformation. So we're going to get to all of it. Just let me know what you want me to get to first, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and start delivering those things up first. So that's it. Again, mentrine.com for all the good stuff. Instagram at Jaron Scott or at mentrine. And subscribe to the video, ring the notification bell, like the channel, and leave any comments below. And with that, I am going to sign off. I wish you all a farewell and fantastic night, and I shall see you next time. Take care.